Yo, what's up, everyone? Welcome to Designated Reports Boxing Podcast, Episode 5. Still working on that name. Um, <laughs> my name is Louie. I'm your host. And as you see, we're shooting live. Gene's the co-host. What up, Gene? What's good? What's good? Uh, some good stuff today, man. But first, we want to get into our uh, Volume 2 playlist, right? Yes. All right, so we worked on our Spotify Volume 2 Boxing Playlist. All right, it's 20 of our favorite hip-hop beats. Not the best hip-hop yeah. beats, our favorite right. hip-hop right. beats, yeah. right? Make so you guys got to chill with the make comments, that clear. Make that clear. right? Make that clear. Um, just a disclaimer for the young folks, like we don't have any like Playboy Cardi right. or yeah, we're okay. a little bit older, so you're going to hear some Jays. And we're we're, we're going to get to I guess those. We, get to those. we yeah. have some Cameron. We got a lot, Busta, of, some Busta, Busta, yeah. a lot of dirty South songs as well. Uh, what's his um shorty low shorty low shorty little low, flip right. Yep, yep. all right so those songs are really popping more like basically 2000s right yeah, most yeah. of those beats are maybe from some 2000s. a little bit earlier but right? yeah, a little afterwards. so our young people we got y'all next time yeah, yeah all right you gotta stay tuned for it all right so look out for that and um so let's get into some current events mm -hmm. um this week we heard uh, probably the biggest news is conor mcgregor coming over from uh, UFC potentially fighting. My oh, man's hot. He don't like it. He don't like it. Uh, potentially oh, fighting Pacquiao next year, which would be a huge fight. I already know you don't like it. Let's talk about it. It's not that I don't like it. I'm happy that they're saying now part of the proceeds goes to charity. What right. is it, COVID related? Yeah, yeah. Right? For the Philippines, right? Um, I'm just tired of Conor McGregor getting like these crazy bags coming over the boxing, man. Yo, what's... It's, it's not that I don't like Conor, but Nah, man. I, I feel what you're saying. The funny thing, <laughs> last night, we were watching the, um, so we're going to recap. We'll get into it, but we're going to recap the, the Charlo Twins fight. We watched it last night. Um, but what was interesting, going back to Connor, was that his uh, proper 12 was the, the main um, advertisement in the ring. Yeah. So he is definitely using boxing to expand his name. No, he's got his bag. And I like it for boxing, but I know how what you mean. Like, he didn't build his way up in boxing. Thank you. And he's getting the bag over so many other fighters. Did he even build himself up in the UFC? How many fights does he have in the UFC? No, nah, he, he, he was real. Oh, come on, man. He's, he's taking a lot of L's. Right. I think he got, like, three L's. Calm he's down. He's taking a lot of UFC, L's to come over here and get, like, 150 But the mils? thing in the UFC, they legit, the best fighters fight the best fighters. So if they got five, six, seven, ten L's, it really don't matter in that sport. Where in boxing, I'm pretty sure different. Mayweather fought a bunch of the greatest fighters who are undefeated, and he whipped their asses. So that's not really saying nothing. But out of the fifty that Mayweather had, mm -hmm. twenty five of them were probably legit contenders, right? Where in the UFC, it's like however many fights you got, they're all top notch dudes. Mm -hmm. It's whoever's in the division, the top three, and then a bunch of scrubs in the bottom. Tell them how you mm -hmm. really feel. All right, so um, Gene doesn't like it, but he's going to watch it. I bet you that much. Facts. Um, I like it for boxing. I do I do agree with you on Conor McGregor. All right, so now moving on, we have um, Devin Haney, mm -hmm. my boy, yes. your boy, yes. uh, signed on to fight um, Gamboa. What's Gamboa's first name? Yeah, well, I think we, well, we had a lot of drinks last yeah, night, yeah. but we just called him Gamboa. Right. This, so Gamboa, this is a who, tough fight. Who the last the last person Gamboa fought was um, Devontae Davis. Was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it was. Be, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's a big step up for Haney. Gamboa has been at that level before. Yeah. But I'm gonna go ahead. I think uh, I think the young buck takes it. What you think? Oh, and that's slated for what? October. October third. October third. Yeah. So that's that's right around the corner. So. I'm going with the young buck, Devin Haney. Who you got? I'm going to go with Devin Haney as well. But, um, I mean, we're only a few, week, a few weeks away from October 3rd. Why do you feel like they that's picked actually, that, that specific? Next, is that next weekend? Yeah, that's next oh, weekend. Shit. Or the weekend after. But why would they give them that short of a notice? Well, they've probably both been training. Okay. You know, and they're probably looking for a number of different opponents who was already training. Okay. Um, and it just happened to be that these two guys. And right now, they're probably, everyone's jockeying for a weekend because we have six big mega fights coming. Yeah, there's a, remember in podcast, I think three, we announced that there was eight championship cards mm -hmm. and really kicking off, I think it was last week with Lubin. Yeah. And then, you know, just the height of it is now over the next like month or so. Um, so yeah, that's another fight coming up uh, here in two weeks. Um, next, we got a, some rumors, some possible gossip. Floyd Mayweather may fight. Uh, what's his name? Logan Paul, YouTube star. Whatever. Yeah, I don't know his name. Yo, they should have Logan Paul fight Conor McGregor. Ooh. That's what they should do. 
No, you, you, right? you want to something, right? You need to go ahead and email somebody <laughs> to get what, part that, of that bag. That's that's, what, yeah, yeah, because it's. I'm gonna sound like a hypocrite, but I know what Floyd's doing. He's like, all right, I can just get up out of bed, go knock out some little kid from YouTube, get $20 million. The Pac Man and Connor will be a, a real fight. Yeah. But I don't know, man. Whoever's Logan's Paul uh, agent, he's doing a hell of a job. Yeah, he worked. He worked. Because <laughs> isn't he supposed to fight Nate Robinson? What happened well, to that fight? Nah, because remember, there's two of them. There's like brothers. There's like Jake and. Oh! Jake and. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Jake and. Jake and Lake. Jake and Logan. Jake and Lake. <laughs> Jake and Logan. Yeah, yeah. So it was like, I think so that's what it is, man. I don't, I don't know. Like, I'm, Jake Paul Logan. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, absolutely, I know movie. nothing about them dudes. Yeah, so, yeah. you know. They make TikToks. But it's in, it's in, you know, boxing news. So, you know, we want to keep you guys updated. Uh, all right. So now moving on to a real fight. Real fight. Um, Terrence Crawford. Taking on Kel Brooks. Special K Kel Brooks. Now, are they going to the? Are they going? Is it going to be here? Is it going to be UK? And that fight is on November fourteenth. It hasn't been finalized yet. Okay. Yeah. So I think if I think if Terence Crawford goes over to the UK, UK, that would that would say a lot about him, and mm -hmm. I think that performance would mean that much more. Kel Brooks, if he comes over, I think it's going to be like more of a homecoming situation. Although there'll be no crowds, but still, it's like you got to travel and all that. I, no matter what, I got. Terrence Crawford. Oh, I win. think we all got Terrence Crawford. Yeah. And if he goes over to the UK, that only brightened up his star, right? That that's what I'm that, saying. Yeah, I, think, I, I think it would be good for him. Name. Right. And but, then that's the thing that, that, that I think is bothersome to you and I with the Connor thing, because Terrence Crawford deserves that Pacquiao fight. And that's the fight we really want to see. Yeah, yeah. Right? So I'd rather see that, but the money might make it is the, the, um, the Connor fight. So, so do you that. think this stage in his career, Pac-Man is just chilling? Because we all know he's also a politician. So I don't think so, man, because his last fight was who? Keith Thurman? Keith Thurman. That's a top dog yeah. at 147, yeah. and he's, what, 14, 15 years younger than him? Yeah, yeah. So I don't think that, you know what I'm saying? But I do, I do think, given this situation with COVID, it's creating probably... Um, Matchups that we didn't expect? Well, it's just there's a, an urgency of getting shit done and getting money. Because yeah. yeah. right now, it's, you know, everything's fluid. You know what I mean? So I think that if it would, there would, if there was no COVID, maybe Connor would get pushed back a little bit. Maybe this Terrence Crawford fight would happen. Yeah. But the Terrence Crawford fight is not going to be a quarter of what the Connor fight's going to be. No, no. In terms of what the money's going to be. But he hasn't fought in almost close to a year, right? So he has to get something in the books. Connor or, or Pacquiao? No, uh, Terrence Crawford. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He right. fought this year? Oh, no, I think it's been about a year because his last fight was. Who was his last fight? Don't even remember. Um, <laughs> all right, so now let's um, let's recap last night. We're gonna skip the uh, the undercards. We're gonna talk yeah. about and focus on the Charlo brothers, right? right? Before we even get into that, I gotta get something off my chest. Talk to us. All right, boxing officials or whoever sets these matches up. We live on the East Coast, meaning, right? <laughs> you don't know if we got work the next day. <laughs> You don't know if we got to get up Yo, and go to church. About talk about it. You don't know it. if I got an intramural talk game. About it. Stop having the main event start at 2 a.m. Word. Right? You guys had an hour intermission talk to for me. no reason. Yo, I ain't going to lie. Because what they did, right, so they kind of played us. Because they heavy. said after. So they basically what they did, they, they had two undercard fights. And then they had um, a Charlo fight, yeah. which was supposed to be the co-main event. Yeah. And the, who, which one was it? The first one, it was Jer Jamal. 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 Jamal? Yeah. Fought Devonchenko. Yeah. Um, and so then they had three, they had two other undercard fights and then let the other um, Jamal. Charlo brother fight. It, I didn't like the setup. I think they should have just had three car undercards, Charlo, Charlo. And then two main events. Right. Yeah. Well, because Jamal's fight was over by 930. So we're like, oh, okay. Yeah, and then the long <laughs> intermission was Dude, like, like an hour intermission, and long. then two undercards. We were sitting there, we were watching, we were catching up with the Laker game. We was watching the Israel fight. Uh, Yo, we were drinking UFC. tequila. Like we, were, tequila. we had some fucking the tacos. Yeah, like the main event starts at one a.m. That's yeah. unacceptable. Like, Y'all gotta do better. And I think this is important because it, it was the first pay per view event mm -hmm. since COVID. Yeah, and although the fights were pretty good, the, the headline fights were pretty good. The experience overall was, was not trash. Not to stray away, but why has like the last fifteen or twenty mega fights? Why have the undercards been so bad? Well, that's because the the main events get paid so much money that they put. That's the difference between boxing, where your main event is going to get 
pretty much 75 to 80 percent of the bag for the total event that's why the undercards are always less fighters so you just pay them but i'm saying i'm pretty sure if i if we can go back and do some research floyd had some adrian broner fights underneath him he had some other fighters same thing with yeah Oscar. but that they weren't getting they, maybe they're getting a million dollars but they weren't getting that heavy you know what i'm saying yeah so that's the difference where in the ufc you know they're going to have they're going to have a range between like I don't know one to five million, yeah. and then they're going to put on a show of like ten great fights, yeah. right? Because in boxing, if you we're talking about um, big fights, you're talking about them guys making at least five million to maybe fifteen. Yeah, I just I mean I love the fights; uh, they're great fights. But living out on the East Coast, if you're in the West Coast, it's over by ten yeah, p.m. Yeah, you're Gucci, you know. You can throw on Netflix, watch your favorite show. But for us. 2 a.m. We're still here. Yeah, because we were sitting there like, man, we're going to record this and just do this shit in the morning. Because, woo. <laughs> um, all right, so, let, but let's get into the fight. So, Jamel. The first one was Jamel versus Devinchenko. Oh, no, Jamal versus Devinchenko. That yeah. was the first one. Mixing up the twins already. Yeah. So, the we actually thought the Devinchenko Charlo fight was going to be the one that was um, closer, more of a challenge. Yeah. Right? yeah. Because Devinchenko's actually had experience with um, Danny Jacobs, Danny Jacobs, mm-hmm. Triple G, which they talked about. Some people thought he won. Mm-hmm. What did you think? What did you see um, in that fight? Well, with the promo leading up, and they were showing highlights of the Jacobs fight, the Triple G fight, I automatically assumed, like, okay, this is going to be Charlo's toughest opponent. And for the most part, Charlo took care of business. Like, he was never hurt. He controlled the round. Like you said, he kept distance. Um, Dervin Checo kept on coming forward, but he had no game plan when he came when he came forward, you know. So their conditioning was top notch, and both brothers. I gotta tip my hat off to both brothers. So I've kind of been hard on them because, let's be real, they haven't really fought you know the top fighters yet, but they showed out last night, and especially with Jamal, his performance was solid. It went twelve rounds, and he he probably. Lost three rounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three but he controlled the whole fight. He set the pace from round one, and he did what he had to do. Yeah. Um, the way I saw it is soon. So we actually shot some live clips that we're going to, you know, potentially throw out there so you guys can see what we were seeing live, which we thought was pretty dope, right? Yeah. So we did that last night. We're trying to edit them in here. But um, so the first thing that jumped out of me was the size difference with Charlo and Devonchenko. It looked like about four inch height, and then the width of this guy. You can tell he's a much superior athlete. Yeah. And when you just come forward with somebody who's faster than you, stronger than you, longer than you, and you're just keeping your hands up, you're gonna make it real easy. The thing that Charlo did that I didn't like, he tried to press to get that knockout instead of letting the fight come to him. But that's every, although that's every Charlo fight. But but we're gonna get back. We're gonna talk about what the other brother did, which mm-hmm. I, I told you I thought was maturity. Um, I thought he was pressing because there were times where you could tell he was totally in control mm-hmm. and had him a little hurt. And the Charlos do like to press um, to get guys out of there. But, you know, nonetheless, he did his thing, did his job. And I think the next guy for him is... Mm. You want to go there? I, it's got to be Canelo, Canelo Alvarez. Maybe, maybe you can go with somebody like a um, Caleb Plant. Okay. And then Canelo Alvarez. But I think Caleb Plant... Could win that fight, and I think I, if I'm Charlo, I want to go straight to Canelo and get that back. Man, at 160, he has to fight Canelo now. Um, who's Canelo's mandatory? So what happened with Canelo? He's suing Golden Boy in the zone, and, and, yeah. in the zone, because he was supposed to fight Billy. He was he was going to sign up to fight Billy Joe Sanders. Okay. Danza came back and said, "We're not going to pay you your minimum because we don't think he's an A class fighter," mm. which is total bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, you got you got a guy who has a belt, um, I believe he's undefeated, mm-hmm. and he's been fighting 12-round fights for years. That's a A-class fighter. It is an A-class fighter, but when they say that... It's, it's, not, not, a, it's not a sexy that's fighter. That's what I'm saying. It's it's not, not, the well, who's sexy right now? The, who's sexy right the, now? The, the, I mean, the Charlo brother. If they want that pay-per-view bout, he yeah. has to fight Charlo. It, it's a sexy fight, but it's it, the name ain't, it ain't there yet. The thing with Billy Joe yeah. is that he's from the UK. Yeah, yeah. So... Yo, you can't. You know how UK gets down. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be eighty thousand. If it was a, it was a stadium, it'd be eighty thousand. Mm-hmm. You know they're gonna buy the pay per views. So, come on. It's in terms of the audience. It's it's Saunders over Charlo. The sexier fight is Charlo versus Canelo. We'll, we'll see. We'll All see. right. So moving on to the 
second Charlo brother, yes. which what what the fuck is his name? Jermel. Jermel, there you go. I'm gonna, Yo, I'm gonna he, fuck it up. Anything with an A and an E, you can't count on this. <laughs> <laughs> too bad. many, too many vowels. I can break down. I can break down the fights. I can tell you what I see. Yeah. You know, from a tech, but when it comes to names, not my thing. Um. All right. So the Rosario Charlo fight. I thought this was gonna be the more entertaining fight yeah. because Rosario and Charlo, from a um, tell of the tape standpoint, they they're pretty much up. even by yeah. the same height, same reach. Yeah. Uh, Charlo had that one L that was Tony Harrison, but yeah. he came back and came back, and right? Yeah. And then I believe Rosario was undefeated and beat the the champion that beat Heard. Yeah, um, Jared Heard, I think his name was. So these guys. It was a you know it was a collision course, and we thought they're both gonna have power, but it ended up being from the jump. Charlo let the fight come to him, and absolutely dropped him in the first round. Yeah. Dropped him. So when you got when you guys see this fight, he dropped him in the first round. But one, he slipped out the ring, right. and as he was falling, he got hit to the side of the head. Yeah. So that kind of threw everything off because. Before that happening, they were pretty even. And it was only round one. Well, I think it, what, what it made coming into the next round, Rosario pressed a little bit and probably took away from his game plan. Yeah, yeah. And then what we were talking about with the, the Charlo brothers, they pressed a little bit. Charlo just, he kept, he was backing up, left, right, giving them pivots, angles, and he let the fight come to him. Ended yeah. up dropping him three times. Three times. Got him out there by the, was it I ninth think, round, tenth round? Ninth yeah. round or eighth. No, I think it was eighth round. Somewhere around there. Was it what? A jab to the stomach, right? A jab to the stomach. Dropped body. him. And it, it was kind of scary. His eyes Yo, started convulsing. Yeah, and he started, started convulsing. He couldn't breathe. And I, we talked about this last night. I'd rather get hit with a headshot any day of the week over a body shot. Because a body shot, you'll feel that shit for a week, a month, two months later. You're running. You get a cramp. Um, a body shot, like, I mean, a headshot, you know, your little days, yeah, man. Pop up, you don't even know what happened. Like, Listen, what's the, the only the worst that can happen is that your brain swell up. You know? Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, no big deal. You can't drive but, the work out. Yeah. That yeah. that that that's scary. But when he hit him to the body, and when he dropped him, I think both of you, both you and I, were like, what what happened? Yeah, because I mean, when he couldn't get up, and then his eyes started to roll to the back. And he of couldn't breathe. Was, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was mm-hmm. a little scary. Um. But Charlo, he came out and and from like you said, from early round one, he established his dominance. To be honest with you, with both brothers last night, I saw their game elevate to levels that I wasn't prepared for them to be at. Like, they caught me off guard. They were sharp. Their conditioning was on point. They had power. They had a game plan. They wasn't rattled, yeah. you know? I like the um, – if you think about the Devonchenko Charlo fight, the first one, mm-hmm. Devonchenko really looked well in front of uh, – against Triple G. That's because Triple G comes forward. He's not going to give you a whole lot to think about in terms of angles and pivots and, you know, creating um, pretty much opening punches with his feet. So that's where you got to see Devonchenko excel. Mm -hmm. With Charlo, who moved a little bit, probably a little bit less than I liked him to, he still gave him the angles very slippery on the inside. I think if you look at the matchup, that's what kind of fighter that you need to beat Canelo Alvarez. Athleticism athleticism and somebody who can match him size wise and power you don't have to be an explosive puncher like he is mm-hmm. but you got to make him respect you no you have to yeah man so i mean boxing has a bright future uh these guys they showed up last night they overperformed they took care of business and that's just setting us up to next year for some big potential fights yeah especially with the charlo brothers i'm um, really excited about some things coming uh coming up we've mentioned a few of them Obviously, we've mentioned some others uh, back in the um, earlier podcast. So this is our first uh, video. We're going to put it up on YouTube. We really hope you guys uh, enjoy it. And we're going to throw some clips in there of of us covering the fight. So check us out. All platforms. Designated report. Uh, We're on Anchor, Spotify, Apple. So subscribe when you do go to the YouTube page. So that way you can see the weekly updates. And look out for the audio part of the podcast on Tuesday or Wednesday of upcoming next week. All right? Shit. Three, two, one. Nice. Like.